So you want to create League of Legends Swarm. All you have to do is click on Window, go to Package Manager, Into Registry, write in an Entities, Install Entities, Install Entities Graphics, type in Physics, Install Unity Physics, then create Scripts folder, add Player and Enemy folders. In Enemy folder, you will have to add Enemy Data, Enemy Offering, Enemy Baker, Enemy System, in the player folder, add player data, player offering, player baker, player system. In enemy data, you'll have to add public struct, enemy data, make sure it's inherited from I component data, used for unit entities, and public float. Do not initialize its value as it will never be initialized manually. For enemy offering, keep it as a class, keep it modern behavior, add public float here, go back to unity. Create a new subscene, just like that. Click save. Once it's saved, add a game object. It can be empty. Name it enemy and player. Add any 3D object. Cube or cylinder. Once that's created for enemy, this will be default. If you click on runtime, you can see what entity will be created later. Let's keep it automatic. Here we add enemy offering, we do not need to add any of our script. Here we add any data we want. Go to enemy baker. In an enemy baker, we'll have to inherit from baker and when the type of enemy offering you created earlier. Once we are done, go back to enemy baker. We implement the interface, which will be bake. We add here our enemy offering. We get enemy, which is we get entity. We add a dynamic flag here. Add component, enemy data, and local transform. This will be your transform just for entities is called local transform. We specify enemy here to make sure we add component to the right entity. The bake method will run. The bake will run only once just to create the entity with this specifies components, basically baking a new entity. Now enemy system will work on each frame, it will use unupdate each frame, uncreate only once. Here we want to specify what we want to do each frame. Usually it will be job scheduling, and schedule in parallel, also use both compile, enemy job. Here it has to implement uh, the interface, basically the execute method. In the execute method we have parameters, parameters we specify ourselves. Basically, we want to specify each component we want. As we can see, if we choose the runtime, it will have enemy data and local transform. So we want to get every single enemy. So let's say there are multiple of enemies, or two in this case. Uh, we can move them apart. So there are two enemies. We want to get all of these enemies because we are entities, we are under the subscene. Under the subsin, it will get transformed into entities, especially if we bake. Uh, and we can see they have enemy data and local transform. We have enemy data because we have enemy baker. And here we specify that all the game objects with enemy offering on, so enemy offering on, which we added earlier here, they will be baked into an entity. So we get this entity, we add the components, local transform and enemy data, and so we have enemy data and local transform. Then in enemy system, here we specify what do we do with those objects for each frame. So on update, we'll want to do this method here each time. In this video, I will only be implementing the moon system. To get this accomplished, we'll need entity query, entity manager. On uncreate, we create the player query. This will get us the player. This will get us the player. As you can see, it has local transform and player data. We'll use these components to specify what kind of entity we want to get. So we do that, we add component type, read only, we can do read, write, read only or read write. 
this will be all I only want to read this. We don't want to write anything, so we do read only. We specify the components, which is local transform and player data. We will use a manager later to get this entity. It's gotten like this. On update, don't forget to reference state everywhere. On update, we will create, we'll talk about this later. Uh, we create the new job. Basically, the job is there. Also, add both compile for job is partial struct enemy job, I job entity. We implement this interface, and all I have to do is just add the execute method here. We specify what exactly we want to do is in the execute method here. So, we'll need data time, delta time, we will need player position, and physics role for later use. We create new job, we specify data time. Data time is now gotten like this. We use system API. A player position is got manager, basically like I said, we use the manager here to get the component. We get component data, local transform, so we need the position of the player, so that's why we use local transform. To get this local transform, we'll need the player query, basically we use player query just to get the entity, so we have dot to entity. We want to get this temporary, because we don't want to use this, so we will do it later, and that's why temporary. We get the first one, just because we have only one player, so we always use the first one. And we get the position. We save it to player position. Physics scrolled for later use. And when we state dependency equals job schedule parallel, state dependency. And that's how we schedule a multi threaded job in ECS. In the job execute here, as I said, the execute will run automatically. You don't have to add enemy system script on any object, this will run automatically. How does it know on which entity to run? Well, basically, we specify here parameters or components we want the entity to have. Here we specify components the entity has. So for each entity that has data, enemy data, and local transform, we will run this script in parallel. Here we just get the direction we want to go, and we update the local position of enemy entity to go towards this direction. Player, player data, have a speed, have player offering, add this offering on the player, make it 10 player beta. We add again player data, local transform, and on player system, we have the basic, well, the same structure here system, parallel, job entity, both compile. This is for better, better FPS. We have some basic input system. We get the vector free, float free, same thing. We get length, add new job, sketch parallel, and we update our position towards where we want to move. Click play, double SD, and we are moving as intended. And have as many entities as we want, and the performance will be as good as possible in Unity. But for later use, you'll want to implement pathfinding for entities, as you'll have obstacles in your way. To do that, you'll need to use physics. And for physics, we installed Unity physics earlier, as I mentioned. Here we use physics world singleton, physics world singleton. We use Unity physics for that. We try to get the singleton system API try to get singleton out physics world. If it's failed, we just return and get the next frame in case it's not initialized yet. If it's initialized, we use physics world singleton dot physics world. We get it in the job script. It's very important to mention it's as a read only, otherwise, your game will break. And here we have physics world. And with physics world, we basically can do cast ray, we can do Overlap box, overlap cap, so overlaps here, all the physics you want, all the collider, all the collisions, and that's how implement pathfinding as well. Once that's done, you can use it to, you can create a new system, you can add a system for handling fighting, for fighting enemies, we can do raycast to hit enemies or check if enemy is visible and all that stuff, that's up to you. But this is basically the basics of ECS dots in Unity 6, how to use it, how to implement it.